Right, hello, welcome to uh, Genie Worlds. I'm John Nelson, and this is another of our webinars concerning the Spark software. So what I'm going to do first of all, uh, the Spark training folder, there is a link to this folder on our the session we are going to do this afternoon is entitled Crosses. So if I stop, all we have in the folder is a JPEG image, which I'm going to use as a, because that's what we're looking at specifically. And there is a PDF. And if I just bring that up, that's really the instructions for what we're doing this afternoon. So once you've seen it, if there's bits you've forgotten or you want to share that with colleagues, that's easy enough to download and repeat. So if I just come out of that and uh, close that, and let's open up Spark. So here we are on our Spark page. So what we're going to do specifically is look at um, background images. And if I go to slide, and then I go to background image, and slide across, then we have at the moment a limited number of backgrounds. We'll be one of those just to begin with to demonstrate that. Just a simple grid. Backgrounds. Uh, the purpose of a background is it's going to stay there. Uh, just to demonstrate that, if I pick up a pen and start to just scribble over that, doesn't matter what I do, uh, I might be doing graphs or anything. But now if I go to eraser, so if I click on eraser, let's go for just ordinary pixel eraser. Now normally that would rub out anything that's underneath as well. Um, more so pixel eraser, uh, region eraser, because if I lasso it, then anything inside that lasso will normally uh, be eliminated. But as you can see, the background stays as it is. So the backgrounds are a good way of uh, keeping an image we can annotate over and then get rid of the annotations. So if I go back to slide, remove background image, so I'm back to a blank page. Now I want to change the background. So again, just for illustration purposes, if I go to slide, go down to background image, Oops, let's try again. Slide, sorry, background image, slide across. If I go to others, I'm not actually limited to the backgrounds already there. So if I click on others, then I can pick up a picture. So if I went to my libraries, I could perhaps find a map or a photograph that I want to annotate over. In this case, I'm going to, I've gone straight to the folder that I showed you to begin with, the resource folder. And it's this noughts and crosses grid. So what I'm going to do is click on that, open. And you can see there is the noughts and crosses grid on the page, or tic-tac-toe, I think it's sometimes called. Thing is, that's quite small. I want to make that large because perhaps, remember, this is a multi-touch uh, screen that I can perhaps have more than one child participating in this exercise. So to make that bigger, I'm now going to the zoom in icon, click on there. And I'm going to start to enlarge that. So every time I click, it's getting bigger. I think that's probably the size I want. Let me go to the move hand icon. Let's put that there. So that is a background. And again, just to uh, repeat, if I pick up and I write over it, go to eraser, let's go to region eraser, it doesn't touch the background. So that's exactly what I want. Right, now, games of noughts and crosses, we're going to devise it so it's as if we're playing with colored counters. So what I need here is two different colored counters. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to insert vector graphics and I'm going to actually draw a counter. I, I suppose I could um, get an image but it's a bit easier doing it this way because what I can do is change the color inside. I want two different colors. So if I click on there and then just draw that counter to 
reasonable size. I think that's about right. Just let me move it out the way for a second. So I'm just going to move that to the left. Now, again, as we've looked at before, if I go away, if I click on an image, I get four toggles. So that's my resizing toggle, rotation toggle. That's just the moving toggle. But it's the menu that I'm after. So if I click on the bottom left menu icon, these are all the things I can do with the image. First of all, I just want to clone an image. Uh, let me click on clone. So you can see that I've now got, whoops, didn't mean to resize it. I meant to move it. Let me go up there. And I'm going to move it to that side. So I've now got two counters. The trouble is they are both the same color. So what I'm going to do now, it's asking me to connect to the equipment because I'm not actually connected to a board. So what I'm going to do now is change the color of that one. If I go over to the left, there's a little tab. And if I click on there, it brings up my thumbnails, resources. But what I actually want is properties browser. Now, if you look in the properties browser, because this circle is highlighted, it tells me what the border color is, what the fill color is. And what I now is change that color. So if I click on the little drop down arrow, I get my color palette. And I think we'll go for red. So if I click on red now, and you see the counter has changed to a red fill. So I've got two counters. Uh, that's not going to be enough to play this game. So what I'm going to do now is go back to the menu. So I'll start with a red one that, and go down just above cloning, the one I've just used. There is drag cloning. Now drag cloning is a very useful command. If I click on there, that means I can just drag clones. It's like a, an endless pile of those circles. Let me do the same to the yellow. So if I go to the left, click on there, get my four toggles, go to the menu, again, same process, go down, drag cloning, go across, set drag cloning. Now, this is uh, where I need a partner to play. Um, unfortunately, it's just me, so I'm going to uh, play against myself. So it's a win-win situation. So let's start. We'll start with yellow. So let me go, and I'm going to go to middle top. So I can place that there, just dragging it off the pile. I'm just going to move that out of the way a little bit. Whoops. Ah, I've drag cloned it. Not to worry. Um, so let's get a red one. And I think I'm going to block that. Yellow's turn. So I go back to the pile. Let's go yellow there. Right, I can see what's going to happen. Looking to get a row in there. So it's red's turn. Just drag one off the top. Really getting exciting now. Uh, yellow, obviously red's looking for three there. Drag a yellow in. Just makes a very simple game just by knowing these few little techniques. Uh, reds go. I think reds can go just there. Is that a winning move? No, because yellow has spotted a gap. So, well done, yellow. Yellow wins that game. That's a very simple technique. So, just to uh, recap what we did. First of all, we went to insert, sorry, to slide. And we went to and image, went to others and found an image that we were going to use as the background, in this case, a noughts and crosses grid. We brought that onto the page. We used the zoom in button to make it a size we wanted. And then to make the counters to play the game, we went to insert vector graphics circle. Other ways I could have done that circle, I could have imported an image, or perhaps I could have used the pen and again, if I just move the page up slightly, so using my move hands, remember we've got an endless page, an infinite page. So if I go back to IntelliPen, depends a little bit on how well I draw a circle. 
but no, that doesn't like it. One more try. No, it's uh, afraid my drawing is not up to it today. But uh, normally, if I'm just uh, at this screen, I can draw that a lot more accurately. Again, that would be an image, although that's not a very good image. If I click on that, I get the four toggles again, and then I can go back to properties and I can change the colors on it. So what we've done, we've created a very simple game, quite nice for multi-user. Remember the, the, the Genie board is a multi-touch board. Um, and just by using those simple techniques, I've created that game. Again, the emphasis has been on creating backgrounds, uh, cloning images, changing the property color fills on the image. Not particularly long, not particularly hard, but quite a few nice techniques in there that you could apply to different situations. So thank you for watching that. Um, I hope that's been of use. And again, it's a nice program to use the Spark. There's lots of little ways that you can be inventive and creative. So thank you very much. Remember, if you go onto the website, the little resource folder is on there. Um, and please have fun. And I hope you win. OK, so I'm just going to minimize that now. Just going to go back. And I think that's the end of the meeting. If you have any questions, you can always get in touch with us. But uh, uh, I'm here to answer any questions. So I hope that's been of use. And uh, see you for the next, um, hopefully, for the next webinar. Thank you very much indeed.